All the anticipation of the moment hit me, and I instinctively knew that the miracle of manipulating energy and tapping into an infinite source of power and harnessing it in a small space with your friends was what I had been put on this earth to do. I had something to do that had meaning and purpose. I felt I could put every idea and stupid little philosophy that I had into a song. I am Anthony Kiedis, member of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I want to share my experiences and all that I have learned. I can find no other word to describe my life but insane, and I have decided to share the good, the bad, and the ugly of my story in what is now a best-selling novel, Scar Tissue. I was raised in the 1960s and 70s with really no direction in life. I was anti-everything. I acted on impulse. I was unstoppable, really. Drugs turned into more drugs for me, as is the case with many young people these days, and I would go on drug binges for days and days on end, disappear without any notice to my friends, my family. My first time doing drugs was when I was 11, actually, with my dad. Um, he was a drug dealer, and before I was 15, I had already gotten heavily into coke and harder things like heroin. I had an interesting family dynamic, to say the least. My parents were divorced, and in middle school, I moved from living with my mom in Michigan out to California to live with my dad, and there I attended middle school and high school before I dropped out of UCLA. It was in my school years that I met Mike, soon to be known as Lee and Halil. I wasn't stupid book-wise by any means, I got straight A's my junior year, but hanging out with my friends, playing music, skateboarding, doing drugs, it all destroyed whatever chance I had at a higher education. But don't get me wrong, I don't regret pursuing what I loved. Um, in my adolescent years, when I thought I knew everything before I had gotten to the point where I realized I knew almost nothing, I had some pretty crazy adventures including constantly sneaking into nightclubs with Flea. I even jumped from a five-story building in an attempt to land in this teeny pool that was below. And as you can guess, I missed, and in the process, I broke my back. Um, I even drove under the influence once and had a very bad car crash that ended up with me waking up to a plastic surgeon reconstructing my face. Before I knew it, my band that had not too long ago, really in the big scheme of things, just started playing little club shows, got a record deal with our own label, um, and we went on tour as a warm-up band. Everyone would always ask me what my formula for writing a song was, but I really have no formula, and that was always the answer. Um, however, at that time, I was a wreck more times than not, and I would miss rehearsal, writing sessions. It got so bad that my band kicked me out of my position. I was one of the founding members of my band and I was just devastated. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. Um, I was just crushed and at that point in my life I knew it was time to clean up the mess I had made. Um, I went back to Michigan for a while and I got sober. But eventually when my band called me back to come to LA with them, I fell out of that sobriety and got back into my drugs. Um, but at least from this experience, I knew it was possible and I could see that I inflicted pain and suffering onto other people, which without me being in that other position when I wasn't in the heavily drug situation, I could never see that before. And that really put an impact on my life because I felt terrible. I felt like I was an emotional terrorist against all these people that I loved. Little did I know at the time that my entire life would turn into this intoxication roller coaster, isolating between periods of drug abuse, periods of sobriety. Um, but trust me, the periods of sobriety were much shorter than the periods of abuse. Um, finally, my bandmate, brother, really, Halil, died of an overdose when we were still relatively young. And this shocked me. I was in denial, I was in disbelief. 
I didn't even go to his funeral. I ended up just delving deeper into drugs and trying to escape my problems. And trust me, it didn't work out very well for me. Um, I'm glad to say that now I'm sober for good this time, trust me. And I'm getting IV treatments for the hepatitis C I've contracted. I continue to love music and honestly, I'll always love music. I can't imagine my life without it. Music creates this beauty, induces joy, can make people laugh, cry, it's, it's indescribable really and although the time I've spent with my band wasn't always smooth sailing and fights were not uncommon, but there's really no other way I would have rather spent my time. I can't see myself doing anything else but music, doing what I love, pursuing this dream that I thought would amount to nothing but has now meant everything to me. And taken the world by surprise. Although my journey's never been an easy one and I have my fair share of scar tissue, I started to realize that that's all right. I'm still making progress. I'm still learning and taking things in. Um, when I wrote the lyrics, this life is more than just a read through, I truly meant that. Never forget it. You'll get far.